I can burst of God today because His love endures forever in the name of Jesus. I can burst of who He is today because His mercy endures forever. I say He is good, He is good, and His compassion fails not in the name of Jesus. Light has come. Darkness can no longer say how the story is gonna go. <laughs> Let's give him praise. God is good. I'm not hearing you. Thank you, Jesus. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Give him thanks. Give him praise. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Wow. I say, wow. I love that. That is one of the, I, one of the reasons I love Revive the Heart Ministries. Yeah. We, we teach there. And we preach there. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. The word of the God must go out yes. huh? to save the life of our people. Yes. It's not because, let me show you something. When you do not love people, you think of yourself. So you preach what makes you look good. You teach what makes you look good. But when you start preaching and teaching things that can make people hate you, yet it's because of love you're preaching it. Now you start preaching. You preach in. And we have to. Because we love our people. We love our people. There are many preachers out there that do not love their people. Yeah, yeah. There are many preachers out there. They tell them, I say, they do not love the people. Because they do not teach or preach to the people the things that can save them. They don't. They only there to make themselves look big, nice, huh? to dress nice, put their, their left hand in their pocket. And, amen, brothers? Yeah. Eh? But nothing coming from them to save a soul. We love you. Yeah, what we say? Everybody, we love you. We love you. We love you. All right? So, hallelujah. We bad by all people. Uh, let me show you. That message, I don't, me, I don't know. I'm not adding nothing to that. All I'm saying, uh, just take a, a look at the entrance of the road. And you will see adultery in its work. And it doesn't play. So that's why... We, the Lord is now warning us, all of us. Hmm? Me too. Uh, me, you know what I mean? Eh. It's me first you warning me. Adultery doesn't play. Well, it's not just adultery, the sexual immorality, fornication. Why? What? What is in that? Eh? What is in that? I cannot leave him. What is in that? Huh? Got a little five minutes. <laughs> eh? What is in that? What is it? The sweetness doesn't last. You, and, and every time you, you, every time, make it worse, every time you start feeling bad, you start feeling bad, you start feeling bad. Why you do it? Why? And you say, repent, that's all. And here's what we're saying. Here's what we're saying. And remember, anyone who finds themselves in that place, and you are ready, you say, I want to come out. Now you can start talking to me. We can start putting things in place to help you. To help you. I am willing to be a shoulder to anybody who is willing to come out of that thing. 
But I won't put myself in harm's way to the person who is not willing. You have to be willing. When you're ready to say, I want to come out of that today, me, i ready to take you out. Yeah? I know how to take you out. I, um, Jude taught us how to take you out. He said, <laughs> stretch your hand, pull the person out of hell. Uh, if being, being careful that you do not even get in contact with the person close, but pull them out. So I know how to take you out. And uh, we love you. Amen. We want to see everybody prosper, everybody to do well. We, we love you. Amen. Satan is a liar. He is a liar, I say. The devil that wants to destroy family, he's a liar. I hate him. Mm -hmm. And any man that, that step into my people, people, me, I don't like them too. I, I, me, I just don't like people fast, you know. I don't like them too. You become an, you do that, you become an enemy of Albert. Because God hates those things. When you do that, you become an enemy of God. May God have mercy upon us in Jesus' name. <laughs> come, come, come. Take the, take the mic. Take the mic. When, you, when people want to, to talk about the message that was, that was spoken, give them the opportunity. Yes, yeah, stand up, sister. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Yes, I said it was a very good message, an eye opener. Because sometimes we are friends with these people and you think nothing is wrong. You know? You are friends with somebody and you check in, man, this person is married. I am just being their friend. You know what I'm saying? So, like Sister Rachel was saying, delete. 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 Delete the number. Delete. Delete the address. Delete. Delete the person. Delete. Just delete. Just delete. Yes. Thank you, Sister Rachel. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. If you don't know how to delete, come, I'll delete for you. <laughs> yeah? Anybody else want to talk about? Uh, anybody else? All right. Thank you, Jesus. Just delete. Uh, deal with it and delete it. Yes. That's all. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I am, I am happy. I am happy. I'm happy. I'm filled. Is all that saying, no, you're not full, or you want more? <laughs> Can you take some more? I'm filled. I'm filled. So I'm going to take my time so to make sure that what was spoken by my beautiful wife is digested. So you, you'll not find me going into anything too, too quickly. Because if I do that, it might put us off balance. I know you said you want more, so let me take my time. Digest that. Digest that. Let that word enter your heart. Let it enter your very soul. Let it enter your very being. It's for all of us. All of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Those online digest that, oh. I mean, <laughs> a lot of people, you know, we only know about the one we see. That is the, the thing. The one we see, we quick to talk about these people. But the one we doesn't see. It have plenty we don't see. And because we don't see it, we don't know it. We think it's not happening. So the one we see in taking blows. Huh? Uh, but the one there is those we don't see. They does, we don't does we doesn't see them, but they're there. Hmm? So get off the back of the one we can see. It's the one we cannot see, like the more dangerous one. Mm, the one we cannot see. Yeah. And you talk about everything, adultery. The, 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 the difference between adultery and fornication is the curse. Serious curse. The adulterer is cursed. It's cursed. But the adultery and the fornication is sexual sins. It's sin against your body. 
Mm-hmm. So the fornicator, <laughs> you may not get the curse the adulterer go through, but you as if they will escape it. Stop fornicating. Get married. And the sad thing, when you see they get married, they don't do sex. The day they get married, they don't do sex again. I wonder why. Eh? Beg. That would have to be begging for sex. Begging for sex. Begging for sex. They tired. They tired sex now. They had enough. Satan is a liar. A massive liar. Get married. And if when you get married, you have a problem having sex, don't waste time. Just bring a bottle of olive oil for me. And let me deliver that for you. You will sex. Uh, Sister Yvonne, you want some? Okay. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Bricks on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So there's a way to deliver that. If if you married and you know you have got um how you call that affection for your spouse, just come, we can deliver that. We can anoint you to, for, for, for affection. And we can anoint you. We can deal with that. We can cast out that the, 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 the evil desire. Huh? Why well, give that to our... Uh, uh, we don't know. We have the love portion. I swear it's joke, it's joke then. We have a portion for everything we see. Uh, portion. Uh, yeah. I know I for a, a young, young lady came and come to me. Let me anoint that for you. Let me give you let me let me give you strength. Huh? Everything to deal with our weakness, God have something for it. And don't say it's marriage, sex. God created sex. And uh, when a married when married people, a wife and a husband, engages in sex, uh, that is one of the top level of worship. And people don't realize that. I would say, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Is that sex not one, one of the whatever? Right. The only way you can do it as unto the Lord is through marriage with your own spouse. Your own. All right? And once you do it with your own, hallelujah. God loves that. As a matter of fact, God say anything that makes the marriage great, he loves it. You know what he say? He say God loves marriage. In the book of Malachi, say God loves marriage. So if God loves marriage and eating sour soap make marriage good, God love that. You understand? If drinking bubble they make the marriage better, God love that. Huh? Yeah, if it make the marriage better, God love it. Anything that makes the marriage better, God love it. And, and, and if, if you see there's a little trouble in the marriage, just go to God. Say, Lord, I, I struggle in there. He will give you what is ne- necessary to make it better. Why? Because he love it. He love it. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, okay. Oh, just <laughs> Hallelujah. But look, good thing. Thank God for reviving the heart ministries. Oh, Hallelujah. I, I don't understand when people say, oh, I don't want to go revive the heart. They're too hard there. Too hard what? We just preach the word of God. That saved the soul. And souls have been saved. And I know our soul was saved here today. I thank God. And God have his way in putting things together. I say God have his way in putting things together. And certain things will surprise us. God have his way in putting things together. Oh. And God make things happen for when things to be, to be happen. Huh? He have his way of putting things together and, and he make things happen. And, and, and sometimes you wonder, ah, how come it's, ah, he's got that setting up everything. He's the one. He's setting it up. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Satan, shame on you. All power belong to Jesus. Hallelujah! Thank you. Ah, my heart is filled with joy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
So we marinated. We, I just let that digest. I just hope, me, I have to pray, Lord, give me grace to teach what these people want to hear there. <laughs> I, I don't know how far I can go without diverting back to what my wife talk about. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Boy, God is good. Ah, uh, thank you, Jesus. All right. <laughs> what you receive today, we call it what? Knowledge. That's what we call it. Remember, the Lord said, feed my people with knowledge. Feed my people with knowledge. knowledge. Uh, boy, do you see the Holy Spirit, Buddha? One time, he take the next message. And he just tie it one time with it. <laughs> uh, I just struggle with wondering how to go about it. Uh, he said, feed my people with. Knowledge. And then the Lord came through Richie and he fed us with knowledge. He fed up with knowledge. And uh, today, um, I, let me give you three stories. <laughs> There was a time in the United States, me and my wife wanted to buy a car. And uh, we went out car hunting and we, 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 me, uh, we, me, chose a car. Uh, it was a Toyota Prius. And uh, now we had never seen that car before. You know what I say? We had never seen the car before, or did we? But we purchased the car, and for some reason, the day we purchased the car, to me, every other car that passed was a Toyota Prius. And it's not just Toyota Prius, same color as our own. And my wife said, but where all those Toyota Prius come from? Sometimes we go in a parking lot and we park, go in the store, and when we come back, we don't know which car is our own. You see two freak Toyota Prius there, same color. Until we pull the, the key and do toot toot. You say, oh, this one is a wow. <laughs> I want to trouble our hearts a little bit. How comes it's only when we get familiar with that, we got familiar with that car, we could see the car? Hmm? Okay. Let me bring another story. One day, some years ago, a friend of mine, young woman in the church, was angry with me. Angry. So I came to her and said, what is your problem? Why are you angry with me? Why do you look at me like? She said, don't, pre don't pretend like you don't know. I said, what, what, what did I do? Did I do anything wrong? Say yes. She said, on first day, you passed me and did not greet me like I do something to you. Now, the truth is that she was malpalling me. <laughs> but I did not know she was malpalling me. But because I passed and didn't greet her, she thought I knew she was malpalling me. All right? So I said, first day, I passed you and I didn't greet you. She said, yes. I said, woman, first day. I saw you nowhere. Nowhere. And then she explained to me where I pass and where I go. And I say, for you. And what time? I say, it's true. I passed there that first day at that time and I went this way. I say, where were you? She told me where she was standing. She said, you look me in my eyes and you turn your head and you go. The truth is, I never saw the woman. Up to today, I am visioning, I bring that back into my vision. And where she said she was standing, there was nobody standing there. Was she lying? No, she was not. Here is the thing. I just could not see her. In other words, the woman disappeared from my vision. She said, I look her in her eyes. I turn my head and walk away. How comes I could not see her? Okay. Let me bring you another one. One day we came from the street and uh, we went to visit a young uh, sister, a family. 
And I, I was the one at, at the front, and I knocked the door, and the sister came to open the door. And uh, I was talking to her for about 30 seconds or so. That we, I started the conversation, I started talking, we started greeting and everything. And all of a sudden, she said, oh, excuse me, sorry, I'm not properly dressed. The moment she said that, I see straight through her blows. Now, here's the thing. I was talking with her for 30 seconds, and I could not see through her blows. I could not see through. She was properly dressed. The moment she said that, I saw straight through her breast and everything. Her blows and everything. And I throw my two hands in, this, in, this, in the heavens. I say, ah! She said, what happened? I say, woman, see what you're doing to me. <laughs> she said, what I do, what I do? I say, woman, I was talking to you the only time. I never see you had a, a, a clear blows. Never. I could not see anything. The moment you said it, my eyes opened and I saw. She said, sorry, sorry. And she ran and covered herself. Hmm. Why? You see the car? Before we had knowledge of the car, we could not see it. <laughs> because I had no knowledge of the woman, and maybe because that one day I was passing, God just didn't want me to see that one. And because I was made aware that his knowledge was given to me, that the blouse my sister was wearing was clear, then I saw. I want to teach us today, because a lot of people just pray, open my eyes, Lord. I want to see. We, are, we have the song, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Sing it again. Open the eyes of my heart. Hey, I want to see you. Hey, hey, I want to see, to see you, somebody. High and lifted up. <laughs> Now we sing it, we pray it, we ask again and again and again. And the Lord is saying, let me teach you how your eyes can be open. Do we want to understand that? Yes. Do you want your eyes to be open to see anything you want to see? Yes. Hmm. Some people say, I want to see angels. Some say, I want to see you, Lord. Some say, I want, but people want to see. Huh? People want to? So today we're going to deliver it. Number one, first thing, read with me. Everybody was born blind. There, was, there is not one person who born with sight. Everybody was born blind. Two, knowledge gives birth to awareness. Everybody was born blind. Knowledge gives birth to awareness. And now I can see. And now I can see. The person who is in the worst trouble or the most trouble is the person who cannot see. Now, give me two people. Let me demonstrate something I have demonstrated there before. Come, Brucey. Yeah. Come, Cassie. Brucey and Cassie. Yeah. All right. This is Brosi. Yeah. Step there. Yeah. This is Cassie. There, Catherine Kuhlman. Uh, she has to be even more powerful than Catherine. We do all you will see. Give us five years, all you will see. Huh? This is Catherine. Um, Catherine has eyes that can see. That is, she can see physically. Brosi have eyes, but physically he can't see. Blind. He, the man is blind. <laughs> All right? Now, give Brosi, uh, give me something, let me tie Brosi. Right, somebody, come on, come on, come on, blind Brosi for me, please. That's why come on, blind Brosi for me. Okay, you come in and blind him? Oh, okay, okay. 
Don't blame Bruce for me. Make sure you blame him, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is Brucey. So we're we going to understand something. All right? No, holy day. No, don't, don't blame him yet. No, Cassie, go at the back there. Okay. Not yet. All right? Cassie, come. When you come back, you try to find this for us. Huh? So they have to try to find that. Cassie, go at the back. So you know what you have to find. All right? Brucey, all right, oh, I hide that properly, okay, all right, you were watching me, yeah. okay, blame Brucey, all right, Cassie, come, so Brucey, is blind physically, and Cassia, Catherine, she can see. Go find that marker, both of you, go find it. And Cassia is looking for it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They are all, they are both looking for the marker. They are both looking for the marker. Cassia is looking. I mean, she can see, so she's looking everywhere. Brucey, he, he, he's blind. Huh? That's your way. Where, keep looking. Why do you? Pop, you can't find it. I thought Bruce that you was watching me. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, come both of you, come both of you. Okay. Okay. All right, here's the question. Which one of them was blind? Cassia. You see? Why was she blind? She had no knowledge of where the marker was. Even the one who cannot see physically will find it because they know, they have knowledge of it. But the one who has no knowledge of it, even if they can see physically, they will never find it. You all understand that? All right, thank you. You can see. <laughs> all right. So we go, we, go, we, go and, we go and dive into it. There are people there who say, I want to see angels. There are people, and we're going to teach you how you can see angels. We're going to teach you how you can see God. We're going to teach you how you can see the Holy Spirit. Remember last Sunday, we make it clear. Knowledge is power. And increases power. And we are still speaking about why God sent the Holy Spirit. Okay? 
then we need knowledge for us to know the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in our hearts. Last Sunday, we were speaking about the Lord Jesus say, remain on, in Jerusalem until you, you, will be, you receive the Holy Spirit and you will be endowed with power from on high. And then we make it clear that when the Holy Spirit, when we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, power doesn't come immediately after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then now we're going to enter into how the, the Holy Spirit empowers us. Even on two Sunday, we explained how the Holy Spirit empowers us. So signs, miracles, signs, and wonders did not take place immediately after the apostles were baptized with the Holy Spirit. All right? It did not, not take place immediately after. And we have to understand it. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes, and plenty of people think, as soon as you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you are speaking in tongues, you have power. No, there is a process. And the Holy Spirit came, comes, he say, and you will receive power. So when the Holy Spirit baptizes us, when we, are, when we submerge into the Holy Spirit, now we have the ability to receive power. So the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to receive what? Power. The Holy Spirit gives us what? Ability to receive power. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going into the scriptures, and let's dive into them. All right, first scripture we're going into, we're going to look at the book of Luke. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Luke 4, 18. All right. Luke chapter 4, verse 18, and I read. What did Jesus say? He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That means he has been baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because, the, the, but because he has what? Anointed me to preach what? The gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And there's what I wanted to see. And what? Recovery of sight to the blind. And what? Let's see that again a little louder. So, one of the reasons why Jesus was anointed, one of the reasons why Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit, was to bring recovery of what? Sight to the blind. And let me let you understand that. This is not physical blindness he's talking about. All right? This is not physical blindness. Though he opened blind eyes, but it's not physical blindness he's talking about there. You, can you say that with me? Jesus came in the power of the Holy Spirit to do what? To give recovery of sight to the blind. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 13. And, and uh, be, be attentive because the, the, the first word was so nice. I, I know wasting time. I know. Uh, eh? Matthew chapter 13. And we'll take it from verse 10. So we'll understand what Jesus came to do concerning the, the recovery of sight. Now, verse 10 in Matthew chapter 13 reads, And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? Can, can you say that? You read that to me, verse 1, verse 10. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? Now, that's the question. 
So what is a parable? A parable is a saying that people cannot understand. So it is, it is spoken in such a language that make it difficult or impossible to understand it. Huh? But Jesus came to give recovery of sight to the blind. Huh? So why is he speaking in parables? All right. Here you see. He answered and said to them, because it has been given to who? To me, to you, to know what? Mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it has not been given. What is a mystery? What is mystery? It is something that is hidden. Something that is unknown to a person. It's a mystery. Something that is unknown to you is a what? Let's say that together. Something that is unknown to me is a mystery. All right? So anything that is unknown to me is mystery. Is mysterious. So he said, because it has been given to you, that is to some people, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So these things which are hidden concerning the kingdom of heaven, Jesus is saying, it has been given to some to know it. You understand? The question is, are you one of those? Huh? Huh? I'm asking you. Now from now on, every question I ask, answer. answer. Are you one of these people? Yes. Now this is why I want you to answer the question with all. And then go on YouTube and get the notes. Okay? All right. So, he said the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven is for us. Verse 12. For whoever has, uh -huh, to him more will be given. And he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. 13. Therefore, I speak to them in what? Parables. Because what? Seeing they do not see. So check this out. What do you mean seeing, but they do not see? That is, they can see physically, but they cannot see spiritually. This is the worst of your life. Like Catherine, she could see spiritually, but um, physically, but... But the one who could not see physically could see spiritually. So the worst state for a person to be is to be able to see physically but to bl be blind spiritually. That's the worst state of a person. So God is making way to open the spiritual eyes of his children. Now I want you to understand that. Everything you see spiritually. You will see it physically. But if you are blind spiritually. What you see physically. You will not see spiritually. You get that? You get that? Everything you see spiritually. That means you can see spiritually. You will see it physically. But if you are blind spiritually, you will not see what you can see physically. Okay? So he said, seeing what happened. Uh-huh. So therefore I speak to them in parables because seeing they do not see. Ah. Uh, and hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. So how can you say they're hearing, but they're not hearing? Because with the ear, physical ear, they can hear. But they cannot hear with the spirit. And they do not understand. So understanding does not come by hearing physically. Understanding comes by hearing spiritually. Understanding does not come by seeing physically. 
But understanding comes by seeing spiritually. So you see, it is more important to see spiritually than to see physically. To hear spiritually than to hear physically. So there were two groups of people. Jesus was speaking and both groups were hearing physically. Both groups were seeing physically. But only one group was understanding and was seeing. Because that group was seeing spiritually. Hearing spiritually. Therefore the mysteries, the things which are hidden to the other group is made known to them. You understand that? Yes. I say today somebody's eyes will open in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. That is the, the purpose for the message. So our eyes might be enlightened. Okay? He continue, verse 14. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of these people have grown dull. Their eyes, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes, they have closed. So how, how, what caused their ears to be hard of hearing? The heart has go. It's dull. It's dull. What caused their eyes to be closed? Their heart dull. So when the heart is dull, the person cannot hear. When the heart is dull, the person cannot see. What do you mean dull? When you hear something is dull, what do you understand by that? It's not sharp. A dull knife. A dull cutlass. It's not sharp. A dull chisel. So for you to remove it from a dull state, what do you do? You sharpen it. So you find a file and you sharpen the knife to remove it from a dull state. So for the heart to be removed, get removed from the dull state, what must we do? We must sharpen the heart. And how do we sharpen the heart? With the word of God. Yeah? No light. Mm -hmm. So we do that well with the word of God. With the word of God. With whose word? With whose word? All right, well, let's do let's, let's it. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn to see so that I should heal them. 16. But blessed are you, your eyes for they... So which eyes? Which eyes? The spiritual eyes. Can you read that with me? For blessed are my eyes for they see and my ears for they yeah. Can you read that again? Blessed are my eyes for they see and my ears for they hear. That is, there is no mystery concerning Albert. You understand that? There is no what? Mystery concerning who? Thank you. <laughs> huh? Let's try that again. There is no mystery concerning who? Concerning who? Concerning who? Thank you. There is no mystery concerning the one who can see and the one who can hear. You know what he said? Therefore, if there is no mystery concerning you, you should know all things. Nothing should surprise you. Eh? Because you've seen from afar everything. The child of God should never be surprised by anything. Eh? Should never be surprised by anything. 
Too often, different things surprising God's children. Why? Because they're blind. They cannot see. They cannot hear. Death surprised them. Sickness surprised them. Trouble surprised them. Huh? You would people hear people say, if that person knew that was coming, they would not have gone there today. Hey. But there are those who know because they can see and they can hear. Huh? <laughs> The person who disobeyed didn't see, they didn't hear. Yeah. They didn't see, they didn't hear. God tried to stop them. But you're going down the road and the Lord can tell you, take a left because there's trouble and you just take left. And you wonder, hey, something tell me. Take a left. Hey, you, you can see, you can hear. We call that discerning. You have the ability to discern. When trouble is coming, right from wrong, good from evil. One of the greatest gifts that God has given his children is the ability to discern men. For the women, he creates you with that. <laughs> the ability to discern. So you see, it is very important for our eyes to be open. And I'm not talking about the physical thing. I'm talking about your spirit. Amen? Amen. In verse 16, he says, But blessed are your eyes for the sea, and your ears for the year. For assuredly I say to you, that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. Hear this. Many prophets... And righteous men desire what? To see what you see, but they did not see it. Why? Because they could not see it. And to hear what you hear, but they could not hear it. So here are all the prophets who want to see and who want to hear, and they cannot see, they cannot hear. And then check what happened. And now Jesus came, baptized with the Holy Spirit, and was sent to give all for the cause of the recovery of eyes, to recovery of sight, to the blind. So it doesn't matter how much we would try to see or hear, it would not be possible until Jesus come, came to recover so we can recover our sight. So the prophets were trying, the righteous men were trying, they could not. When Jesus came, he anointed us to see. Oh, you get that? He did what? He anointed us to yeah, can I ask you a question? Can you see? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jamie. Can you see? Yes. Can you see? Yes. Can you see? Yes. Bruce, are you closer. Can you see? Yes. Okay, what is in the pot at the back? Provision. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we get in there. Huh? Eyes open today? We see in mysteries, yes. nothing is hidden from us. Huh? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. nothing is hidden. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. nothing. After today. Who say after today? Okay, Sister Sylvia. After today, nothing is hidden. Huh? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. nothing. You see, our, our, our nations get in trouble because there is nobody who can see. Every king had either a prophet or a seer. Every king. Every king had what? A prophet or a seer. A nation without somebody that can see is in trouble. Oh, well, you understand that? A country, a nation, a people without somebody that can see is in trouble. To save your country, you, you have to be able to see. You have to. You know, I have never put that one on, 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 on YouTube. But there was a time, we were still down there, in the Baptist place there. And uh, the Lord, while I was there, I, ju I just saw, I just, a vision. And I saw my Prime Minister, the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, on the water. And it go. And I, I asked the congregation to stand. I say, let's pray for our Prime Minister. There is trouble upon the water. 
there's something, something, there's a trouble there. And uh, who was there? Who, when, uh, anyone of you remember? You remember that? All right. And I say, there's trouble. And, uh, and we prayed. We prayed. But it was after that day, the man was taking a casual um, relaxation on the, on the, the boat and the, the coast guard of that same nation. You, all you know that what that went down in that story. But the Lord showed it to us before. It means that something could have gotten ugly. Because first of all, the Coast Guard didn't believe he was a prime minister of a nation. So anything could have happened on that water. But the Lord did what? He showed us. So we could pray. Eh? We could pray. Now, let me show you something. One of the things that blind us is politics. And that's why he had revived the heart. We are harsh on politics. That spirit, we don't like it. Because it can blind the worker from seeing for labor and blind the labor from seeing for workers. You understand that? Because the worker hate the labor so much that they cannot see what to tell the labor. Do, and the wo- labor. So we hate that spirit. We believe in government and we pray for the government. Whether the government come from the United Workers Party or from the Dominican Labor Party, we pray for them when they are installed. So the Lord showed us and we prayed. And uh, that, that, I don't know what could have happened, but something could have happened that the Lord stopped from happening. A nation that cannot see is in trouble. Is in what? I mean, when we talk about the, that program they have, the passport program, why do you call it? The by, by, by CBI, or Citizen by Investment. It's very good for our country. Very good. Very, very good. And um, one day, one night, I was minding my own business in sleep. I was maybe even snoring because my wife told me I was snow. So that is to show you how much I was minding my business. And then all of a sudden, the Lord began to take me into a vision. And uh, I didn't know concerning CBI at that time because I just listened to Dominica Radio. I don't like to listen to those, those nonsense they have on the, our radio station. I don't listen to those things. And, and I saw an American ship came in and docked in our, on our port. And a white man came and begin to, with a scope, scoping. And I went to the prime minister and said, hey, look, this white man is spying on us. Get rid of him in the country. And then I saw, and and something happened, and then I was in a protest. I was in a protest outside the parliament building. And, and, And many people gather outside the parliament building, and I'm walking up that street. What's, what you call there? That going up Newton, you know. Huh? High Street, Victoria, yeah, June, June, where are you? <laughs> I check it for that. The High Street, don't know where close. To it. Uh, so Victoria, and uh, I walking up, and many people gather in front of the Parliament Building. That's that pink, pink building. And when I look, I saw the same white man in the midst of them. And when he see me, he escape. I say, what is that? And the Lord began to show me what it is. And then I start to hear of a white man that was fighting against Dominica CBI program. So the Lord showed me. And uh, I'm going to tell you how the Lord protected that CBI program. Can I tell you? Can I be honest? Maria. <laughs> yeah? Can I, can I be honest how the Lord protected that CBI program for our nation? Maria. If Maria did not come, that program would have been in trouble. When I cry out to the Lord on the night Maria was slamming Dominica, I was in the United States. I was crying, oh Lord, my people. I beat in the girl. I, I, tears running down. Wim coming out. Uh, I cry hard, you know. And then the Lord said, shut up. 
You people do not know what is good for you. You do not know the difference between a curse and a blessing. Stop praying for Dominica and pray for Puerto Rico. I say, hey. So it's a, one time I said, oh, Lord, Puerto Rico. <laughs> the Lord, it was a blessing for us. See how fast Dominica recovered. And it's in a better place now than it used to be. Our eyes need to be open. If our eyes are closed, the nation perish. So what are you going to do to make sure your eyes open? It's not just for the nation, for your family. I share testimony of how the Lord wake me up to pray for my brother and he was saved. Huh? To pray for my brother, he was saved. My wife and them was in America and one time I saw an accident, I saw she, she was coming a hill somewhere in a hill and then another car hit her car and I woke up and I started praying, I started praying. It was a long, I, went there, I hear my phone ring. Oh, what happened? Uh, I'm in an accident. I, uh, the car right off but they were okay. Why? Because I saw. I saw it before it happened. So I could pray. So I could pray. Children of God, it is important for us to be able to see spiritually. You know, marriage is getting trouble. Why? Because the husband is blind or the wife is blind. They could not see it coming before it starts. So they cannot stop it. When you cannot see, you are helpless. When you are blind, you are what? Helpless. You know, the other day we made some radical change on, uh, on, on last year on crypto. I was too greedy. I take my $3,000 too fast. Uh, and after I take my $3,000, I see that thing keep going up, keep going up. Uh, and I start, as it goes up, I calculate how much money I would make. And I would have made $40,000. And I take $3,000 instead. Uh, greedy. Uh, why? Because Prophet Ed Brunson said, uh, crypto going to make a move. He saw it. And I say, Prophet Ed said that. He said, yeah, I said, let's buy crypto. <laughs> and it moved. So many people poor because we cannot see spiritually. So you never know your poverty is because you're blind. There are many people who are sick because they are blind. This is why God wants to open our eyes. And he's instructing us on how the eyes can be open. What eye are we talking about? The spirit. Okay? The spirit. Now from there we go to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. You know how often we go back to Genesis? And to me everywhere I come they're going back to Genesis. God knows what he's doing. It's the book of beginning. Everything started there. Genesis chapter 3, and we'll take it from verse 1. Uh, can I get an Adam and an Eve? I want an Adam and an Eve. I want an Adam and an Eve. <laughs> okay, Eve is coming. So you have to wait for, for if, uh, Adam. <laughs> All right. So Eve, Adam. You know God created man. And then he created the woman for the man. But there is the command he gave. God put a certain tree, a certain fruit in the garden. And he said to the man that he must not eat of that that the day he eat of it, he will surely die. All right? So he said, you can eat of every fruit, every other fruit, but that one, do not touch it, do not eat it. Why? It, it belonged to God. It was a fruit for the gods. It was a, the, a fruit for who? The gods. Now, the reason why I say the gods, check this out. Elohim means God, 
But as they say, the scholars, like we know, they are smart people. But the scholars say the Elohim in the Genesis, when the Bible says Elohim, it, it means the gods. Gods. It, it is plural. And many people say, no, it should not be plural because God is one. That's nonsense. The, the Most High God spoke to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was there. So that's why it is plural in the Bible, in, in Genesis, Elohim. So, so the fruit of knowledge was food for God. Whose garden was it? His garden. He told man to take care of the garden, to keep the garden. He hired man to take care of the garden. And man's wages was all the other fruits except the tree of knowledge. All right? So people start to figure out what was that tree. And some say it was the banana, the banana tree. Some say it's the apple tree. Some say it's the grape. Some say it's the pear. Some say, no, the mango tree. Some say it's the sex tree. You know? He said, up in this world. Why you, why you smile on that one? <laughs> he said, well, you must stop that. <laughs> uh, uh, so, I don't know what you call it, but there's one thing we know for sure. It was the tr fruit of knowledge. Yeah? So, God put all the other fruits before Adam. And he said, eat of all this fruit, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or the tree of knowledge, do not eat. The day you eat, you will surely die. Eh? What did Adam do? Adam ate. Eh? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> if I thought it's you, I give Adam to. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now we're going to chapter 3. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God made, had made. And he said to who? The human. Huh? <laughs> he said, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. You see that? Uh, what is it? For God knows, what God knows, that in the day you eat of, uh -huh, your eyes will be open and you shall be like God, knowing good and evil. Wow. So all this time, the man was blind spiritually. The woman was blind you see how I could go to the, not see through the, the clothes because of what? I was blind. Until knowledge made me aware and my eyes opened. So Adam was blind. Eve was blind. They could see the fruit, but they could not see it. Adam could see Eve, but he could not see her nakedness. Eve could see Adam, but she could not see his nakedness. They were blind. Why? Because in the spirit they could not see. So the serpent came and said, God knows the day you eat that thing, your what? Your eyes will be open. Eat what? The fruit of knowledge. Was he lying? Because they say, all it can do is lie. My boy doesn't lie. Either. That boy is a deceiver. <laughs> that boy used truth to take you out. Yeah? He's a deceiver. Was it speaking the truth? Yes. 
So what did Eve do? She take from the fruit and she ate. And what happened? She was still blind. <laughs> she was still blind. She said, hey, you tell me when I, I'll see. I still see the same thing. I, nothing new. And the serpent said, no, 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 no. It's the boy, the big boy there. You have to give him. And she went and she gave her husband. And the moment they, he ate, what happened? They both, the eyes were open. Huh? Their eyes were? All right, so we keep reading. What verse we stop? Seven. Then the... Uh, five, okay. For God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw, when did she see that the tree was good for food? Huh? No, when the serpent spoke to her, when she received knowledge. So they could not see that the tree was good for food because they had no knowledge of the tree. The moment the serpent told her that this fruit, when you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. Knowledge was given, then awareness then she saw it was good. All her life, that tree was not good. All her life, she could not see anything good in the tree. Nothing good in it. But when did she see? It said, verse 7, then the eye, no, verse 6, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Mm -hmm. Then what happened? The eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked. In other words, they saw that they were naked. Were they naked all the time? How come they didn't see they were naked? They were blind. So the eyes that were open was not the physical eye. It was the spiritual. It was the spiritual eye that was open. So you see what was used to open the eye? Knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge was what was used to open the spirit Spiritual eyes of the people. If you cannot see spiritually, it's because you're lacking knowledge. That's why it is clear. Because my people lack knowledge, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. The eye of the heart. All right? You want to prophesy? They don't have scriptures that have to do with prophecy and prophets. And you will begin to see what the, the people doing, hiding their home, and you can tell people, do this, go there, don't do that. I see you oh, in the realm of the spirit. It's knowledge. Okay? Now, in, in the book of Psalm, chapter 119, Psalm 119, Psalm 119 and verse 130. You know, there's one person who put it this way. I think it was Elon Musk. You see, I used to be afraid of the dark until I realized that darkness is only the absence of picture. Eh? 
Likeness is what? The absence of what? Pictures. The, when, when, when you cannot see pictures, it gets dark. Eh? Like Bruce, see, there's this picture. The absence of picture. Darkness is the absence of picture. So, but when it is dark, you cannot see. Eh? Now, Psalms 119, 130. The entrance of your words gives what? Light. So therefore, what causes a person not to see is what? The absence of light. Huh? The absence of light. So we can safely say light is what? Knowledge. And knowledge is light. Light is? And knowledge is? So when there is no light, there is no sight. You cannot see if there is no light. If there is no knowledge, there is no sight. You cannot see if there is no sight. So the entrance of his word, when we enter his word, it gives what? Light. His word is knowledge. When we enter his word, that is knowledge, it gives what? Light. So all the time we are living in darkness until we begin to meditate in his word and then let there be light. Once light comes, we can see everything. Let, okay, no moonlight, no dumb light, no nothing. Come there and see you. You turn knock your to everywhere. But the moment Brosi takes his flashlight and do, light come, you can see the stones. It's not that the stone does not exist. But they remain a mystery until light. And what is the light? Until you receive knowledge of it. So what does God want for us? No wonder he said, and I will give you shepherds according to my own heart, and they will feed you with what? With knowledge. They will feed you with knowledge. Knowledge. Remember God, God point knowledge and, and he, 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 teach, he taught us how we are gods. And people say, oh, blasphemy. These are blind people. Because they have no knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom. And then he taught us how we can live forever until he come. And people taking that, ah, no. You die, me. I'm not dying. Eh? <laughs> but we need knowledge. And he is pouring this knowledge into us. Huh? He's doing what? He's pouring this knowledge into us. My praise after today, you will never be surprised by the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Did you hear me? Yes. I say after today, you will never be surprised by the devil again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, one night I went to sleep and then I was visited by Emma and uh, what's his name? You say, who is Emma? <laughs> Emma and I forget his name. What's his name? But, but I remember Emma well. Well, they are angels. <laughs> Emma and I forget his name. And uh, they were speaking to me. And while they were speaking to me, the one whose name I forget say, watch this. And I watch, and I saw horses, black horses. And upon the black horses were beings sitting upon them. Black beings with hoodies over the, the head. And the horses, and I saw leading them, is a bigger being. And he's sitting upon the leading horse. And they begin to charge, and they are coming, charging. And the angel said to me, look at this. And I look, and I saw them charging. Hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of horses charging. And he said, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. When he said that, I got up. And I look around. And I saw a stick, and I take the stick. And I prepare myself, and I put myself behind the door. And by the time I was almost... I, 
I had just put myself in place, the horses were upon me. They were demons. I defeated them. Why? Because an angel opened my eyes to see them coming. If the angel did not come, that night in my sleep, they would have finished me. You see, when we blind is trouble. When we blind is trouble. I pray after today that your eyes will never be closed again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will never be surprised by the plan of the enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Every plan that he planned, you will know it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even the very meeting in the kingdom, you will know what they are planning in Jesus' name. Amen. Never again be surprised. You know the word say, do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. That is, do not lack knowledge of his plans. Knowledge of his plans make you see what he is doing. An ignorant person is a person who lacks knowledge. Huh? Huh? So, the entrance of his word does what? It gives light. And it gives understanding to the simple. It gives light. It gives what? Understanding to the simple. So, we want to see where do we go? We go in the word of God. It is that word that opens our eyes. It's that word that opens our eyes. It opens it so we can see. So we can see what is happening in Nigeria, in America, in England, in Britain, wherever we can see. And if we can see what is happening out of Dominica, then we should see what is. Yeah. We can see. You know how many protests we stop in Dominica? They don't know. The protest that will have finished Dominica is will have stopped it. Why? We saw it. You remember when the volcano was supposed to destroy Dominica? They don't know. All that happened that day, all they saw is it smoke. But before it smoke, what we saw? We saw lava. We begin to fire prayer, fire prayer, fire prayer. So where by the time it takes place, uh, it was subdued. All Dominica saw was Sufuye erupt, letting go smoke, but they did not know we stopped the fire. We saw it before it happened. Before it happened, we saw it. Oh, you remember? It's we fire that night. Nothing had happened yet. We were firing because we saw lava. We saw lava. We see mountain catching fire, and we begin to. So when it finally erupted, it just do. Pff. No, it was supposed to pff, just drop. Just supposed to do, but we stop it. <laughs> Why? Because they were seers. As long as there are seers in the land, the land will be safe. Amen. Amen. So what we're asking. The, the, the opening of our eyes. Yet we're not praying, not open my eyes because he's teaching us how our eyes can be opened. Find ourselves in the, in the word of God and meditate in it. In the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, We think it's only those who are called prophets that should see. Every one of God's children should see. Every one of us. Ephesians chapter 1. And we'll take it from verse, verse 15. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. 
And here is with the prayer of Paul for the, for the Ephesians, for Ephesians. Ephesians. He said, therefore I also, after I heard of your, faithful, of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the sins, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may do what? May give to you what? The what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Check this out. Paul is praying, Lord, give to them what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, remember what causes the destruction of God's people. The lack of knowledge of God. My people are destroyed for lack of? That is knowledge of his truth, knowledge of his mercy, and knowledge of him. Lack of knowledge caused the children of God to be destroyed. In other words, when the child of God cannot see and knowledge gives light, then they are destroyed. You cannot see your enemy who is planning for you. Guess what? The enemy will destroy you. You cannot see the demons that are planning to rise up against you. They will destroy you because you cannot see. Why? Because you have no knowledge of their plans. But not after today. I hear what I say. Not after. Today. Did you hear that? Yes. Not after. Today. Not after today. Not after today. Huh? Do, do you believe that? Can you, can you really, really dive into that? Not after today. Your eyes are opening today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Knowledge will open your eyes. Amen. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you're trying to tell me it's the Americans that, know that can, that can um, what do you say, the dick technology. Yeah? So God cannot give us, show us how to make a, a computer if a pen then. Yeah? Yeah? If you look at this building, I, did I, I had any knowledge of building? No. He said, go build. I said, Lord, if you want me to build, then you have to give me the skills to build. He gave me the knowledge. Look at it. I built it. I built it. It's from there I believe I can do anything. And then my favorite scripture is that I can do all things through Christ who give me the ability, capability, the capacity, the knowledge, the skill, the wisdom, the power to do it. So what can stop you if you have knowledge? If you have knowledge, you are unstoppable. What can break you if you have knowledge? If you have knowledge, you are unbreakable. What can unsettle you if you have knowledge? With knowledge, nothing can unsettle you. Nothing. Knowledge is power. The more knowledge you have, is the more powerful you are. Do you understand that? The more knowledge you have, is the more powerful you are. Therefore, you should seek knowledge. Eat knowledge. Day and night, Eat knowledge. Night and day, eat knowledge. Every day, eat knowledge. Eat it. So he say, we read verse, verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Why that knowledge of God? You want to know why? The next verse. That your eyes, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. But here it is. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. So knowledge enlightens the eye. That means make you able to see. You see, it's not prayer that opens the eyes. It's knowledge. It's not prayer that opens the eyes. It's knowledge. So open that Bible 
take it out from the shelf, dust it up, begin to meditate. Take time meditating in it. Huh? Take time meditating in it. More and more. The more you meditate, the wider your spiritual eyes get. The more you meditate, the further you can see. You meditate little, your eyes open, you see up to here. But uh, you need glasses. Eh? Anything beyond that, you see blurry. You can see it. You keep meditating. Then you see up to there. Then up to there. That is your eyesight getting better. And what makes your eyesight better? Knowledge. Say knowledge. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. John chapter 14. We are going to take our two last scriptures and I'm done. John chapter 14. So Paul is praying, give them a, the, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit who will teach them wisdom, and the, the spirit who will give them revelation in the knowledge of you, that their eyes may be open, that their eyes may be enlightened. And children of God, we are still speaking concerning the Holy Spirit and why he sent the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, John chapter 14, we read in verse 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. Read with me. One, two, read. But the helper, who is he? The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send uh -huh, in my name, will do what? What will he do? What will he do? What will he do? Now, in the, word, in, in, the, in the place of the word teach, say, he will give me knowledge of all things. What will he do? Give me knowledge of all things. So what will the Holy Spirit do? What was he sent to do? The Holy Spirit was sent to give me knowledge of what? All things. How many things? All things. Ah, you want to build? Is that something? Yes. You want to do business? Is that something? Yes. You want to have a good marriage? Is that something? Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? Give me some of the things. Huh? Huh? To raise your children? Uh huh. Education? Uh huh. You want to prophesy? Uh huh. Come on, people. Huh? To, to, to your garden, your, 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 your farming? Uh huh. To clean? Uh huh. Huh? Sports? In whatever it is. Yes, yeah, what is he? He came to do what? To teach us all things. He came to give us knowledge of all things. I mean, you have the greatest teacher. The one who knows all things. The one who sees all things. The one who hears all things. Dwelling with you and you are still blind? You are still blind? Huh? He's with you. The one who gives eyes to see is there. He walking with you every day. He talking with you every and you blind. You boasting. He live in me. So wherever you go, he go. But you blind. <laughs> Why? Because we are not allowing, allowing him to do what he came to do. What did he come to do? He came to teach us all things. Now check this out. And he say, he, and he will do what? And bring you and bring to your remembrance all things that I say to you. In other words, we have to go in the word of God to hear what Jesus says. And then the Holy Spirit uses what we meditate on to teach us. To give us understanding. If we do not meditate in the word of Jesus Christ, there is nothing he can use. So, is he with you? Yes. Is he in you? Yes. But you are lacking one thing. 
the word of God. Because you need that word to open your eyes. In John chapter 16, John chapter 16, verse 13. <clears throat> John 16, 13, it says, However, when the who? The spirit of truth has come. Uh -huh, he will guide you into all truth. Uh, for he will uh -huh, own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. In, in other words, imagine that. I, imagine. Imagine, yeah, that. He will not speak in his own authority. And whatever he hear, he will tell you. That he will speak. He will tell you. The, who is talking about? The Holy Spirit who live with God and in God. We, tell me what he does here. What does the Holy Spirit hear? He hear everything God think. Everything God thinks, God speak, the Holy Spirit hears it. And the Bible tell, make me to understand that the Holy Spirit is there to do what? To tell me everything everything he hear to give me knowledge of the very thoughts of God. And I still blame. Ah. <laughs> ah. Not just, he doesn't just hear God. He hear what a certain plan. He could hear what president's planning. He could hear what your enemy's planning. Everything he hear, he tells me. Knowledge is power. The lack of it is destruction. Knowledge is power. The lack of it is destruction. <laughs> His own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will what? Tell you what? Things to come. He will, make, he will tell you things to come. So nothing should be hidden from you. I was sent to tell you, if you want to see, if you want your eyes to open, knowledge. Knowledge gives birth to awareness. When you are made aware, then you can see. Knowledge gives birth to awareness. And when you are made what? Aware. Then you can see. You never know it was so easy. Yet it is so hard. You know why it's the hard part? It's for you to go in that Bible. <laughs> huh? That is the hard part. For you to go in that Bible now. Uh, uh, yeah. Then you start coming with all the excuses. You know what? Uh, bro, you see for me, I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy. You know, I have to go work. I have my children to take care of. I... And, and I have two jobs, you know, for, for now you, just see for me, just see for me. <laughs> but let me tell you, not everything I see, I'll tell you. Huh? No, you think I'll tell you everything I see? No? Uh -uh. So it's best you see for yourself. Hmm? It's best you see for yourself. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes you, you, you wonder, you, you, you say, but, but what else? What else can you do? What else can you do? It is one thing to be laying hands in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. But we have done the greatest thing is to give knowledge that you may eat. We have fed you. Yeah. Are you some of those ungrateful people? It have out there. After we break our back, bringing plastic bag of groceries, we put it before them. When we go in, they say, uh, one more thing. Say, I pray for me. What? You don't even say that pray for me, that carry that thing for you, you and me. Say, I pray. I hope you're not asking for a prayer today. Huh? I, how, are you well fed? Uh, you're well fed. Are you not going to ask for a prayer? No. Just let your eyes be open. From meditating in the word of God. 
Hmm? Huh? Rachel, come and she gave us knowledge concerning how to live our life and to abstain from sexual immorality. That was knowledge. That was rich knowledge. We ate, didn't we? We ate. Yeah? And then I come and tell you, let me show you something. Stop praying for your eyes to be open. Just eat knowledge and the eyes will be open. The eyes will be open. It will be open. Hmm? The, the person who struggle with lack, just bear patience and be diligent. Find the scriptures that talk about God providing for us and meditate in it. And you will just see, people will just start bringing, you, doors will just start opening. Just as simple as that. But we are not diligent. By the time we do two days, two weeks, we get tired. No, just be diligent. And let's just meditate in those scriptures. And before you know it, light will come. Light will come. The one who is sick, just find the scriptures that have to do with healing. Meditate in it before you are healed. Two years down the line, you, you remember and you used to be sick. Well, what? To me, when, ah, I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus. But you don't know, two years ago, you were healed. <laughs> yeah. Cassie, she wants to walk on water. You have to find the scriptures where Jesus walked on water and start meditating on it. Huh? Meditating on it. One day you just see yourself walking on water. Until we have knowledge of, the, of, of, of these things, they will not be fulfilled in our lives. They will not be. Huh? Juliani. Oh, Juliana want to fly home. Oh, Juliana don't want to take plane. Oh, Juliana, you have to start meditating on scriptures that have to do with with your, and Jesus disappeared, and Jesus walked on water, and Jesus walked in the air, and Jesus, yeah, and then you just come. <laughs> it just come. Uh, I, told, I told this story when I decided I want to go to America, but I don't want to take plane. I meditated in the scriptures, and one night I say, I go in. And I close my eyes, I go in some deep meditation. And I feel my feet start to leave the ground. Boy, 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 fear fall on me, boy. <laughs> I never try, I never try it again. <laughs> I never try it again. Huh? But if I put you try it, I just get capo. <laughs> huh? We can do it, can we? Can you just say, say I can do it? I can meditate in the word of God. I can be diligent. I can do it. And I will do it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's give him thanks. Let's give him thanks. Hallelujah. Remember, go back to, by Tuesday evening, they will release that message. Go, listen to it again. Again and again. Again and again. The more you hear the things, the more faith comes. It's the more you enter, the more you are able to do it. Just play that thing over and over and over and over and over again. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. I know I'm not going to take too much of your time again. I know people want to and eat. And... Uh, and we're not going to pray for nobody because we give you enough to deal with any situation. Any situation that there is, you can deal with it. Did anybody bring their, their little bottle as we will ask to receive the, the, the oil of Jehovah? Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bring, bring, come. Okay. All right. Though the Americans, I know sometimes you just get a little jealous, but don't worry about that. The, as, I, as we talk about, the Lord has given us our first anointed sticker, and that is coming soon. And uh, that one we can always mail to the Americans. And, uh, and bless them with it. Amen? And, uh, but today, we have the... Boy, they bring all kinds of... What happened to your sister? Oil. Okay. 
we have the oil of Jehovah with us. And the Lord, the Lord, um, yeah, that, that, that good, that. I don't know why is that too. <laughs> All right, so the Lord has blessed us with the oil of Jehovah. I remember uh, we, this, this <laughs> you know, it went for, we see it working. Huh? And this one was in the oven before his own. Huh? This one was on the prayer altar before Officer Coffee's own, the prayer altar, before Officer Coffee's own. And uh, the Lord said to me to call it the oil of who? The oil of Jehovah. And when we do just a little tip in our finger and anoint our forehead and say, Lord, Jehovah, I have marked myself for your attention. Huh? Jehovah, I have what? Marked myself for your attention. Now we talk about Jehovah Nisi. Huh? Our what? Our banner. Jehovah Rohi. Huh? The one who is huh? shepherd or fighting my battle for me. We usually say that. Jehovah Shalom. My peace. Shama. Huh? Well, you just move with anything for me there. Uh, God. <laughs> oh, no, you're talking, sister. You, I just said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so when we, when we call Jehovah, uh, we don't have to say Nisi, all those names. We say Jehovah. I mark myself for your attention. So once you say that Jehovah Nisi is away, Jehovah Jaira is away, Jehovah Shalom is away, Jehovah Shama is away, Jehovah, uh, he knows. He's the same Jehovah. If with many names, all right? And uh, when you live in your home, you're going out, that thing should last you for a long time. It's just a little touch of your finger. I mark myself for your attention. So he protects you as you go. He gives you favor as you go. Jehovah is with you. So we call it the oil of? Uh, right, right now, we just did a button. Everybody bring something. But the, the time is coming where we will, we will have official... Eh? Official with, with, with all the instruction, uh, with the oil of Jehovah and everything on it. All right? All right? Yes. Okay, thank you, Father. So let's give him thanks in the name of Jesus for blessing us. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, so, Sister Ivona, you brought that this morning? Yeah. Uh, Sister Ivona, nice little bottle. I like that. Okay. Come see Savona. Step there. All right. Give Sister Savona a mic. Give Sister Savona, get Sister Savona some water, some oil, some water at the back. Let her anoint herself. A fingertip dip. Yeah, just let her dip her finger. Dip her index finger in that. Index finger. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's enough finger. That's enough finger. Yeah. I'll just put that in your anointing of oil. Yeah. And pray. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. 
I anoint, I anoint myself for your attention. For your attention. Amen. Amen. Now, <clears throat> the prayer is anointed. That's the prayer he gave me to give you. I anoint myself for your attention. Hmm? You know what I've been asking? I've been praying, Lord, Lord, when you go and give us water. Because water is here. We can fill 20 bottles of water. Yeah? But I will not be... I am not one of those because I see people doing it, trying to do it. The, the sticker coming because the Lord gave us the sticker. Where he not to give us nothing else but the, the oil. Come. Jehovah. Jehovah. I anoint myself. I anoint myself. For your attention. For your attention. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you are anointed for his attention, he will give you attention. Eh? Eh? He will give you attention. All right. It means that as you go in, your way, your health, your marriage, your finances will be given attention from the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 So, I, I, I want to do more by watching the time than I, nah. so we're not going to do more. I know you believe. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So, Sister Sylvia, come and get your. Sister Sylvia, get a full bottle, man. Let me see how much are there. All right. Uh, Sister Yvonne, come. I have one bottle of water. Can you take one? No, one you want is one. Okay. <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, take the one you want. The spray one. Mm. Is that one there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Richie, go and take one. Now, those who bring the bottle, let them take first, okay? Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, Joby, come and take one. Elijah, come and take one. Sister Elizabeth. You and Marcia. Who has bring water? Joyfell, come and take yours. Who has bring? As if nobody has brought. Okay, proceed. Let me pour yours for you. Proceed, come. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
No, we have eight bottles left. Some need it more than others. You look around and see if there's somebody who needs it more than you and let them come first. St. <laughs> huh? Clos. Okay. All right, St. Clos, come and get one. Uh-huh. Where are you pointing there? Huh? Come, 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 come. Take one. God bless. Yeah. Who is here, Jen? Come. Yeah, I'll go to you that choosing it on me. <laughs> yeah? It's not me. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I'll be here, your name. Okay, I hear Dawn. Come. We still have three more. Uh. All right. All right, Catherine. And uh, let me deal with Sister Jolin. I mark myself for your attention. Before we, we go, we all just going to do that before we leave. So let me just make sure. All right. Let's go. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, all our children stand up in the middle. Everybody come annoying them. And uh, anoint those at the back that have got a bottle. Now, all of who, you who, who has, uh, open your bottle. Right, well, Brody, anoint give those, those children. And open your bottle. And uh, Brody, go ahead. Just, uh, yeah, you, you do your wife first. And uh, yeah, let's see your oil. And uh, it is simple. Jeho oh Jehovah. I mark, I mark myself I mark her for, your attention. for your attention. You go ahead and just oh, on Jehovah. your forehead. I mark him. For and just attention. pray. Jehovah, I mark myself oh, Jehovah. for your attention. Those of you who know attention. the names you want to do, Jehovah Nisi, oh, Jehovah, Jehovah Ro 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 Rafa, attention. Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah Shalom, Makadesh, Jehovah Jaira, I mark oh, myself for I your attention. For your attention. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jehovah. In the name I of mark Jesus. Her for your attention. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jehovah. You are marked I mark him for his attention. attention. You are oh, marked Jehovah. for his attention, for I his attention, for, for his attention. Oh, Jehovah. Hallelujah. I mark her for your attention. Hallelujah. 
you are marked Lord. for his attention. You, Jesus Christ. You are marked for his attention. For your attention. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. So Jehovah will protect you. Jehovah will provide for you. Jehovah will guide you. Jehovah will direct you. Jehovah will show you. Jehovah will help you. Jehovah eyes are upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let's give him thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Children, you can go back. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the live word, Father. Thank you for your word, your word, which is sharp, Father. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for knowledge, for sight, for light, for wisdom, for revelation, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for lighting our way with your word, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. We say good morning to everyone here on site and here and online. Good morning to you on Zoom and YouTube. Good morning to you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Um, so I know I know one person sent a request for prayer in the chat. So um, yes, that is noted. So be blessed, everyone. Um, you're not forgotten, even though you are online. So you, yes, we say good morning to you in Jesus' name. Until next time, be blessed.